Coach Ken Schweitzer and Bob Verderber. Fourth quarter action from Hanlon Field. Cruz hands it off to Highbreder. Highbreder on the run, and he's tripped up. He just gets down across the 25-yard line from his own 35 for another first down for the rail splitters to start the fourth quarter. You can see he's, he's securing the ball as he goes up the middle, Bob. Yeah, yeah, you worry about somebody's arm reaching out there and grabbing it, but he's got it uh, tightly up against his body, and he picks up another first down. He's down inside the 30, down to about the 23-yard line. And the raindrops continue to come down here at Hanlon Field. As the rail splitters out that at wing formation. The 23 is coach showed you first and 10. Cruz letting that uh, game clock run down. Now he comes up under center. He's got a man in motion. That's Connor Smith. They hand it off to Anthony Cannon. Anthony Cannon still on his feet. Fights his way down to the 15. Anthony Cannon with an eight yard pickup for the rail splitters. Looked like he hopped over a guy and then he just kept churning him out. Yeah, somebody had him by the ankle. He kept shaking him loose and got it, got away from him. Got it down to the 15. A nice hard run on first down by Cannon. And uh, Lincoln's on the drive again here early in the fourth quarter. They lead it 13-6. You're listening to 96.3 FM out of Atlanta, Lincoln. WLCN. We're also online. WLCNonline.com. Second and four for the rail splitters at the 15-yard line. Got a man in motion, and they blow it dead. Connor Schmidt went in motion, but uh, not soon after that, they blew it dead, and they're going to call a penalty against the rail splitters. It's going to be a five-yard walk-off. I didn't see the signal. If it was uh, more than likely a legal formation or legal motion, one or the other, and they're going to take a five-yard walk-off against the railers. And Moves it back to the 20. And they're trying to keep the ball dry out there with a towel at all times. They don't put the ball down right until they have to, till the center gets up there. White will split it out wide to the right. At the 20. Second down. Man in motion. And they hand it off to, I believe that's Cannon with the football. I'm not sure. I think it's... That's Connor Schmidt. Yeah. Schmidt down to the 10-yard line. I think they're going to... Connor Schmidt on the, on the delay takes it down to the 10. And that's going to be first and goal for the rail splitters. I think that's, uh, yeah, it looked, uh, looked like Connor going right up the middle, Bob. And uh, there's some holes, some openings there in the middle that wasn't there in the first half that the railers are exploiting for first downs. And uh, now they're inside the 10, goal to goal. That's what our friend Steve Sauer said. He said it was Connor Schmidt with the football. And now first and goal for the railers. Now they got a man in motion. And they hand off, and that's Cannon that time. Anthony Cannon down close to a touchdown. He didn't make it into the end zone, but he's pretty close. And you can see the Spartan defense is just uh, not quite as sharp as it was in the first half. And uh, the rain may have something to do with it, but they're not uh, hitting and wrapping up like they did the first half. And that time, Cannon got down to, uh, looks like maybe about the two, Bob. I can't tell exactly. Yep, I bet they give him another shot, second and goal. Cruz might keep it himself. Got a man in motion. They give it to Cannon off the left side. He's in. He just bowled his way in. He had about three guys hanging on him, Coach, and he wouldn't give up. And finally fell into the end zone backwards, taking the, the whole uh, defensive line of Olympia with him. And the rail splitters now lead it 19-6 to with 9.44 remaining in the football game. And that was a nice, uh, nice drive by the railers. And uh, he did it all on the ground. And uh, doing it wisely, staying on the ground uh, with the rain coming, and you want to run clock, and uh, now they've got a little bit of more comfortable of a lead here. And I'm going to guess they'll go for two here instead of try to kick. And with that 19-6 score, they will go for the two points. Either cruise or take it. Cannon's offset to the right, so they may no, fumble the snap, and he gets back on it. So the score will remain 19-6 with 9.44 remaining here in the football game. We'll be back after this here left in the Lincoln Rail Splitters game here at Hanlon Field. They lead the Spartans 19-6. to Coach, the Rail Splitters got off to a slow start. They went into the locker room without scoring in the first half. And then, as you said, Coach McDonald talked over the, uh, the offensive side of the uh, football. And uh, we've got a couple of touchdowns uh, offensively and then of course the interception by austin cruz yeah and now they've got a you know a two touchdown lead which is uh um, not quite as precarious as a one but uh you know you still can't count the spartans out here with all, almost a full quarter to go 944 here in the fourth and uh 
again, like we said uh, in that third quarter, you just don't want to let them, uh, let them break a big one. And like you said, Coach, they can always break the big one. Cooper, he kicks a low sidewinder, and it's, oh, fumbled, picked up. He hands it now off. He hands it back, and he's on the run. Finally tripped up. There was only one other man, the kicker, there to, to get him, and he got tripped up. That was, was McNown. I think that was Eimer that took him down, though. And uh, He's a soldier. They, they uh, picked it up there on the kickoff and just handed it off to McNown, McNown and he just uh, went through the defenders, and luckily Eimer was able to take his feet out from under him and stop him, but he's on the 45-yard line of, the rate of their own 45. The only man uh, after Eimer was the kicker, Grant Cooper, and... Uh, Dane Eimer came through there with his green cape on and just knocked him down. Rogers, center of the field. And now he throws it into the backfield, and he stays on his field. He's finally wrapped up right before midfield to check and see who that was. That was uh, McNown. Ricky McNown starting to get the calls, the big, strong kid, the running back, the senior, 5'9", 165. He looks bigger than that. He's a good size uh, athlete out there, Bob. And uh, the one thing, you know, uh, that, that's hurt the Spartans here is uh, they've turned it over a couple times here in this second half on a fumble and an interception. So, uh, you know, if you delay, make them take a lot of plays, chances are they'll turn it over again. Out of the eye, second and five for the Spartans at the midfield stripe. Ro Whoa, Rogers throws it out. Oh, and, uh, he is wrapped up. Threw it to a man out in the flat, and a rail smoother made a textbook tackle on him. Hey, great pressure inside by two railers, Bob, there in the backfield, and he just kind of lofted it out there, and it looked like it had a chance for another interception there as there was two defenders there uh, on the receiver, and yet he was able to catch it, but they lost yards on that. They lost about two on the play, so it's uh, on the 47. Their own 47 is going to be third and about eight. And the clock's still on the move, Coach. 8-28 remains in the football game, and Lincoln leads it by two touchdowns. Now McNown splits out here wide to the right. Rodgers, the left-hand quarterback, has got the snap, and he's going to throw it on the other side, though, and he throws it way over the head of the intended receiver. That was uh, Lane Gaston, and he threw that way over his head. Uh, good coverage, though. Yeah, there was good coverage, and he uh, tried to, had to get rid of it quickly because there was some pressure on him, and he just uh, threw it way over his receiver. It's going to set up a fourth and eight here now, and, uh, you know, you're in the fourth quarter. you got nothing to lose, so you know they're... They look like they're going to punt, but don't be surprised. We saw a fake in the first quarter. One of the corners out there for Lincoln is Sean Cannon. He's a sophomore, 5'6", 120. And they do bunt it away. And again, another nice high punt. And just it, yeah. they just let it roll dead at about the 21-yard line where it's down, and Lincoln will take over first and 10. I was kind of surprised to see him do that. Uh, Bob here with eight minutes to go in the game, uh, down two scores. I thought maybe they'd go for it, but they punted it, so the Railers are going to have it in their own territory on about the 22. And as long as they've got to do is hang on to the ball. No one four stairs. 8.07 left on the game clock. Lincoln 19, Olympia 6. Olympia scored the first six points of the football game, but it's been all rail splitters since then. Cruz got a man in motion, hands it off. That's Connor Schmidt. Schmidt with good running room. Gets his way down across the 30-yard line. Going to be close to a first down. Let's see what the call is. Connor Schmidt got some good blocking out there on the left side. You're right, Bobby. He had some nice lead blocks out there, and he just uh, tried to run off them and uh, picked up almost uh, near first down, almost nine yards out to the 31. So we're going to be uh, second and short for the rail splitters. Bacon, the first guy out of the huddle, the center. The guards are all and... Aper and the tackles are Reed and Brummett. Cruz looking down along the line of scrimmage to the left side. Now he's got Schmidt in motion again. This time they hand it off to Anthony Cannon, and he's got a first down, and he's still on his feet. Down to the 38-yard line goes the big man, Anthony Cannon. Railers have racked up a lot of first downs here in this second half, Bob, compared to the first half, and uh, they only had three for the first half. They more or less just uh, have worn that defense down. Well, I think you're right, and, uh, you know, that, that time Cannon got out to about the 38, about a seven-yard pickup. Clock still on the move, 7.09 left in the game. Lincoln leads at 19.06. Cruz letting that clock run down. Now he's ready. Now he's got Highbreder in motion, and he's got the football. Highbreder makes the turn. He's taken down at the line of scrimmage. 
He tried to take it up, but there wasn't anything there except for Spartans, and they're going to say it's about a yard loss. Yeah, you, you know, uh, despite the score, I've been impressed with the uh, Spartans as far as, you know, the defensively, Bob. They've come up uh, from the outside and made some nice plays there. Just when you think that uh, Lincoln solved that defense, the Spartans, you're right, will come back and make a big stop. So it'll be second and uh, 11 for the rail splitters. Back about the 37-yard line. Got uh, Highbreder in motion. They hand it off to Cannon. Cannon's tough to take down. Now there's a penalty, and Cannon pushes them for a, about a 10-yard gain just short of a first down, but there's a penalty on the play. Yeah, it's going to be against the Railers. It's going to be a hold there. That's <clears throat> going to negate a good run by Anthony Cannon. Well, he had a lot of men on him, and he just kept pushing it up. He was about a yard short of what would have been a first down. But the penalty is going to take it back five yards uh, from the site of the infraction, and that's going to take it all the way back to the uh, 29, 28-yard line of Lincoln. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's going to still be second down now. The clock starts with uh, we're going to be under six minutes on this snap, Bob. So that's the key, keep the clock running now. Time's on Lincoln's side if they can hold on to the football. Here's a coach on the sideline letting Cruz know when to snap it. There he goes. He rolls out. Now he hands it off to uh, Can Cannon, and Cannon's down just short of the 35-yard line. He picks up about seven yards there. As coach said, the clock's still on the run. We're going down to 5.30 left in the football game. Lincoln leads it 19-6. to six. That was just kind of a counter, counter play that time. The motion went to the left, and, and Cannon came back to the right and got past the line of scrimmage before he got tackled after a six-yard six pickup. Cruz looking for the signals from the sideline for the play. Now he's got it, goes into the huddle, and the Railers bust out. Eimer split wide to the right, and now official... Calls timeout Lincoln. Coach Andy McDonald wanted a timeout with 5.07 uh, left in the ball game. It's going to be third football game of the season for the Rail Splitters and the Spartans on senior night here at Hanlon Field. If the Railers can hold on, they'll have three victories on the season. They lead it 19 to 6. They've got the football and it's third and 15. Coach McDonald didn't like what he saw, Coach, and called a timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure what the problem was, but uh, rather than take a chance, it's a third down, third and long, and uh, I think I would like to pick up a first down here and keep the drive alive. West White split here to the near side. Cannon's offset. And now the man in motion. Cruz going to keep it. Cruz looking for running room, and he's wrapped up. Nothing there. He, uh, he didn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. He's got back maybe to the 33-yard line. Well, I think probably Coach McDonald said, you know, we're going to run a pass here, but if the guy's not wide open, don't throw it. And... Uh, you know, and stay in bounds and keep the clock running and do what you can, and that's exactly what happened. And he got tackled for a loss back to about the 30-yard line, 31-yard line. The Railers are going to punt, it looks like. And now Olympia calls a timeout. Olympia calls a timeout with 4.39 left in the game. Lincoln leads at 19. Here, coach, and the Railers have got the lead, 19-6. It's going to be fourth and 20, and the Rail Spitters got to punt it away. Yeah, the punt team went out there, and the Spartans, they're not going to give up either, Bob. Uh, they're going to conserve a little time by taking that time out their first here the second half and uh so they're going to have the ball with about four and a half minutes here to to try to make something happen on offense cooper will take the long snap from ethan kunkel for the rail splitters uh, cooper's all the way back at his own 16 yard line good snap he's got it he gets it away nice, nice spiral five. gonna come down to mcnown nice makes a great catch uh -huh. and now he's on the run and a railer got him by the ankle or more that was that was uh, Metalco. Yeah, I think he had him more like by the shirt, but he ain't hung on. Brent Metalco, the sophomore, a scrappy youngster. He's the backup quarterback, and he makes a nice tackle there at the forty-yard line. That was a nice punt by Cooper, nice high and spiral, and uh, and uh, they made a nice catch. Was it, who caught that? McNown. McNown made a nice catch there uh, up over his head, and tried to get back upfield uh, over to the middle, but Metalco made a good stop there. That stopped the clock at 4.27 left in the game. Olympia first and 10 at their own 40. Let that eye. Rogers. 
Throws it out in the That's flat. A oh, the railer slipped that was going to tackle. Now the, uh, the uh, Olympia player slips. That was McNown. The rail splitter was going to tackle him, slipped, and then McNown slipped down. I'll tell you, the middle of the field is getting really shiny and, and dark, Bob. You know, I'm sure it's getting a little slick out there. Oh, about yeah. A, it's a steady downpour. I think that was more of a lateral than it was a, a uh, forward pass, but nonetheless, they caught it and uh, picked up four on the play. At their own 44-yard line. Now McNown splits out wide to the right here. They like to switch him around. Rogers. Now he looks to his left side. Out. Whoa, man, almost picked off. Oh. The intended receiver was uh, Sean Humphrey. And they're going to say a railer may have hit him, may, maybe pass interference. Yeah, that's what they're going to call it. It was a side judge calling it. The back judge there was looking right at it, didn't call it. But uh, of course, we might have hit just no a call. little early, but it was hard to tell. And <laughs> that's what the call is going to be. So it's going to be a uh, first down, automatic first down for the Spartans and a walk off against the railers. That is the call. 3.48 on the game clock. And railers still with that... Uh, 13-point lead, 19-6. to six. So That's going to take it all the way down to the Railer 46-yard line. That, no, 41. 41 yeah. yeah. That's a 15-yard walk-off. High formation. Rogers got the snap, wants to throw. Oh, yeah. Well, he could, he tra- intended receiver was McNown, and one of the Railers popped him. That was uh, Anthony Cannon that popped him. And the ball flew up in the air, and one of the railers intercepted it. Uh-oh. Big hit there by Anthony Cannon to cause that ball to pop up in the air. Uh, Rogers had his arm in a forward motion, and one of the railers was able to catch it at the uh, Lincoln 47-yard line. So I didn't see, did he forward pass it or fumble it? I couldn't see what happened there. I... Yeah, he might have just been a, a fumble. I, he started to draw his arm back, and Cannon just popped him. Well, no matter what, the Railers have it. A great defensive play by the Railers. A blitz there by Cannon and uh, put the pressure on as they wanted to throw, but uh, Railers are right there to recover on the 47. He had McNown wide open out here in the flat, but Cannon hit him so quick he didn't know what hit him. First and ten for the rail splitters. Hybrider goes in motion, and they give it off to Anthony Cannon. He's got a first down. Anthony Cannon down across the uh, Spartan 44-yard line. Now there's a penalty on the play, but that's back in Olympia territory. Yeah, that's going to be a late hit against the Spartans, I'm sure. The ball's on the 43, which I think got the first down. Now there's going to be another 15-yard walk-off of that. That's going to march deep into Olympia territory. <coughs> Cannon was hit and was already down after that great gain, and then an illegal hit on him, and the penalty's going to take it down to the 29-yard line of the Spartans. Uh, that was a nice run by Cannon to start with, Bob, to get the first down or on the run, and then he was down, and somebody hit him late to, to and, draw the flag. And that keeps the clock running, Coach. 3.25 left for the game, and the clock on the move as Daniel Bacon comes out over the football. Bacon, one of those seniors playing tonight, number 72, 6'2", 325-pounder. Cruz, the junior quarterback, surveys the line. Now he's ready to go. He's got a man in motion. Hands it off to Connor Schmidt, and Schmidt stacked up at the 30-yard line for a yard loss. Yeah. He Again. He's still not down. Finally, <laughs> the whistle stopped the play. He was still trying to get away. The Spartans kept coming. He actually lost a yard on that play, Bob. Back to the 30-yard line, but uh, he keeps the clock running, though, and that's the most important thing right now. Yeah, absolutely, and that... Some Spartan, I didn't, couldn't catch a number, but he came up from the secondary, just flew up there, Bob, and broke that play all up. A lot of seniors out there tonight for Lincoln. Twelve of them. Cruz. And now he's got Schmidt in motion again. This time he gives it to Cannon again. Cannon wrapped up after about a two-yard gain. He gets it down to the 28-yard line, so now it's going to be third and nine for Lincoln. With 2.14 left for the game, and Lincoln leads at 19-6. And that's, uh, you know, the the yard gain and everything doesn't make a whole lot of difference now. It's just a matter of keeping the clock going, so it's going to be a third and long. I uh, thought maybe the Spartans would take a timeout. They've got two left, but I think maybe they've kind of resigned with two minutes, under two minutes now that uh, they're not going to be able to catch up. White splits here to the near side. Heimer out on the right. 
Man of Motion's high breader. And high breader's taken down at the 30. So he loses a yard, but uh, still the clock continues to run. I think that was Kleinmark. Zach Kleinmark, a great open field tackle. He came up, Bob, and, uh, and made a one-on-one -on -one tackle there for no gain at the 30. Maybe lost a yard down to the 31. Zach, or no, uh, he did lose about two or three then. Kleinmark uh, plays linebacker. He's also a wide receiver. He's a junior, 5'6", 145. And as Coach said, he made a nice hit there on high breader at the 30-yard line. Down to a minute nine left for the football game. Lincoln leads at 19-6. Cruz, uh, as Coach said, looks to the sideline, waits till the uh, clock runs down. Connor Schmidt goes in motion. Now Cruz rolls out. It was a long pass, and it's so oh, just picked off. They slapped it down. I think he could have hung on to it. He just slapped it down. Well, yeah, unless he thought he could make a big return, it's probably the smart thing that gives him back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll go over on downs with uh, to under a minute here to go in the game. First and 10 at the 31. 54 point. Four seconds on the clock on senior night here from beautiful Hanlon Field on a chilly, rainy October 19th. High formation, Rogers and the Spartans. Rogers pitches it out to his tailback on the left side, and he's got a good gainer. Out about eight yards he goes. That was uh, Goff, Cole. Goff on about an eight-yard pickup there for the Spartans. Now the <coughs> Lincoln will try to rush a couple extra players into the game, maybe a couple seniors here that didn't get in. Let's see. Uh, they'll get one more playoff at least. High formation. Rogers gives it to the fullback, and he's going to be close to a first down. And there's a penalty, maybe a late hit on Lincoln. Stop the clock at 16.2. Yeah. Coop. So that was a uh, penalty against Lincoln, and they'll bring it back to the... 40, up, up to the 47-yard line. We just had our uh, a couple of the Lincoln assistant coaches, Coach Jeff Cooper and Davis Hodum, come down from on top, Bob. They're soaked. A long pass along the sideline. Good coverage. Whoa, man. Great, great defensive coverage there. Yeah. Perfect position. Yeah. He ran right into a rail splitter. I think, is that Imer? I can't tell from that far away. I think it was, but he had perfect position on him. No, that was, uh, that was Wes White. Wes White, He had man. great position on that, Bob, as he went down uh, step for step with the receiver. And uh, as the ball got there, he knocked it away. Good job. Oh, now you guys Wes White's a junior. He'll be back next year. Come on, run out. <clears throat> Four time. seconds left on the clock. we got time for one more play here, Bob. Uh, they may air it out again. Yeah, you'd think so, but... Maybe they've had enough and want to just run it out, but they gotta they gotta make a snap here. They're gonna have to have one more snap. It's a second down situation. Of course, Lincoln leads at 19 to six. They look to go three and six on the campaign. Last year they were two and seven. Had a chance to pick up a fourth victory this year against Southeast, but uh, Herman Senor the third played a good game and scored all 24 points for the Southeast Spartans. High formation. Rogers comes up under the center for the last time. Lincoln wants to blitz. They throw it in the, to the tailback. He's up to the 45, to the 40, and he's taken down, and that'll be the last play of the game. That was, uh, oh, no, now we got a fight breaking out in the end of the game, and they're going to have to break it up. Cole is a, a senior, so there won't be any penalty on him. 